Hello farmers, welcome back to Griffin, Indiana. It's day two of spring. And overnight uh, was not a pleasant night because my loan payment is $20,000. Peanut, you just came from a series where your loan payments were like 150. Yeah, I know that. But at least in that series, I had all the equipment that I needed and we were making cash. I have nothing right now that's making me cash. So here I am doing a contract job for cultivating. Now I'm lucky that the subsoiler that I bought counts as cultivating. Well, I mean, you may be saying it does plow and cultivate. Well, yes, it does actually plow and cultivate, but if you were to take a plowing job with a subsoiler, it doesn't count as a plow, so you don't actually get to plow a, a field. So I was wondering, I'm like, okay, the only jobs available to me right now are cultivating jobs. I'm like, is it gonna count as cultivating? And yes, it does. It do, so we do. Uh, cultivating jobs. Now, the only other issue is, because I always play Farming Simulator on Hard Economy, and always have since FS15 came out. Well, I shouldn't say always, but 90% of the time I do. Uh, yeah, this job here for this field, yeah, I think I'm getting paid just over $1,000 to do this job. And every night I'm going to owe $20,000. I don't have enough cash to pay off any enough of the loan to make it worthwhile to bring down the loan interest. So I'm going to be doing, need to be doing a lot of contract jobs for a while because like I said, there's nothing on my farm that brings in cash. Absolutely nothing. So contracts are going to be the name of the game. Now the best part that we have is I already have a spreader for lime slash fertilizer. So when it comes time to fertilize the grounds, I think that's when we'll make up our cash and hopefully dig into making a uh, pay off this loan. At least get the loan down to a reasonable amount so I'm not losing 20 grand a night. Yeah, because like I said, I have, I have nothing to bring into cash right now. So I've been thinking about the series this a little bit now since my mind's kind of opened up, if you will. <laughs> but uh, So this is the way I would like to approach it here. Definitely would like to get some cows the first year and... Yeah, the challenge of this farm here is to get 2,000 cattle and be able to feed them with seasons on and all that. So originally I was thinking, how many cows do I want to get? How many cows are we going to be allowed to purchase? And then, and so on and so forth. Do I want to have a limit on that? And I think the, my limit of buying cows is going to be set to 200, which is 10%. Easy math. So that means uh, our cows have to reproduce. I, at first I thought of a low number. I'm like, wait, that's going to take forever for them to reproduce and get up to 2,000 cattle. That'd be a long flipping series. I mean, I don't mind a long series. Uh, take a look at the Pacific Northwest. I think I was like just shy of 200 episodes. I don't mind if this goes 200 episodes here either, but I think if I start off with a really low number and try to get up to 2,000 cattle, um, it's going to take a while because I was thinking on the Pacific Northwest... I was just barely reaching 500 cattle, and that that, that took a while. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I did see where it said the contract in this field is complete, but I am going to complete it to completion. If that makes any sense. So I may be doing some contracts off camera now and then at the beginning because, as of right now, this is, this is the only downfall of seasons is it's not like uh, on the base game where you can just you know there's going to be jobs for everything. But being in seasons right now, no one's seeding. Uh, no harvesting, none of that is going on. So it's all pretty much cultivation jobs. In a couple days' time, there'll be some seeding jobs and whatnot, but I don't want to do those jobs because I don't have a seeder. So I would have to lease the equipment, and that takes a hit. So if we go into here, uh, yeah, I got paid 1400 for that. Let's go ahead and collect that. So cultivating, 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 yes. It's, it's all that's really here. Um, so let's just take a job like this. Okay, so field number nine, that's that's a good amount of cash. Uh, yeah, so if I were to if, use your own equipment or lease equipment for reward, reduced by 8,100, that's quite a lot. That pretty much is more than half of what the job is. Field number nine, I don't know the map well enough. Where's field number nine? How, ooh, that is a big field. I just did this little field right here. That is a huge field. Um... Let's look for a smaller one that can go on. Cultivate field 14. Where's field 14? I have no idea. Field 14 is down here. All right, we'll, we'll take that job. We'll just take the small ones here and there. Because it'll allow us, uh, one, to drive around the map a little bit. And two, I mean, let's, let's just get a good look at this. This field here is what? Field number 
white on white. That's good. Feel that's field number five. Field number five is probably one third the size of field number nine. It wouldn't take me that long. I may do that uh, job off camera. I just want to bring, be able to bring enough cash to offset the loan payments. So if I can get up to a hundred thousand dollars, say that'd be great. The one thing we do have to do at some point, but not going to do it uh, this in-game day because the ground temperature is only 43. I want to plant oats. And ground temperature for oats needs to be 43. So we're right there. I, I, I'd rather wait a day or two. Let that ground temperature rise up because if I plant it too early and we get some frost, then it's not going to hold. And yeah, I may, lo I may lose some. So let's just wait a couple days. There's no rush. I do have traffic turned on here, right? I thought there was traffic on this road. Maybe there is, and we're just not in that general area. But like I said, I don't know the map that well yet, so hang on a second. I'm going to... What field am I going to? 14, right? Down here on the right-hand side. It's field number 14. i got so many numbers going in my head right now. I'm just saying, yeah, so field number 14. So I'm driving on a cab today, so you can kind of get a good view of the map, because I don't think I really gave you a map tour yet. Like I said, in episode one, I, I gave you two people to go watch for map reviews on this. That'd be uh, kind of awesome if there was actually people playing in the ball field. Let's go down here and get started. As for the map layout around the farm, I haven't wrapped my head around that just yet. But uh, right now, I'm just trying to get a base going here. And I was not expecting... This should be field number 14 right here. Yeah, I was not expecting the loan payment to be that much. I mean, I don't know why I didn't think it would be that much. I just, I guess it didn't come across my head that it would be. So, I mean, if I did nothing but work on the farm and bought stuff for the farm. Luckily, I'm not, I almost bought something before the end of day one. And I was like, ah, eh, let's wake up tomorrow and see what's available for contract jobs. And then when midnight came, I said, wait, what's that payment for $20,000? i am like, uh, yeah, stupid, you got a loan payment. <laughs> yeah, that wonderful little loan payment on that $3 million. So, yeah, if I didn't do any work, I'd be broke in about three more days. Uh, not, not, not fun stuff. Not a way to start a series. And like I said, I don't want to borrow more than $3 million. I'm not going to cheat any money in. I'm not going to do anything like that. That $3 million helped pay for the land that we have, the equipment that we have, and the house that we have. So I'm just going to have to work for it. But like I said, I'm just probably going to do a little bit of work off camera. Now when it comes time, I would say late spring, early summer, where we can start easily making some cash, is when it comes time to spread some fertilizer down. Fertilizer contracts seem to be the way to go. Always have been since FS19 came out. Fertilizing, fertilizing, fertilizing. So, if I can make it to late spring. Yeah, we'll just top off our fertilizer spreader. And hit the road and just do a whole bunch of fertilizing contracts. And I may just do a whole bunch one day or for a couple days and do some off camera. Get a whole bunch of cash and help pay off that loan. So I don't have... You know mortgage payments or loan payments at midnight actually I don't they're not yet actually even loan payments it's interest payments because you're not actually paying anything off the loan that's just on interest so I just need to survive as for our drill I got our drill kind of picked out uh, gonna have to lease it and it's gonna cost me five this little more five grand to lease it and hopefully, it shouldn't take me more than an hour. That feels not that big. So I was looking at all the drills I could possibly use. And since I don't need to fertilize it now, because we already spread fertilizer on the field, I picked a, a drill that doesn't have fertilizer uh, container on it. So it's going to be a little bit cheaper. Um, I want to lease one that's second hand. Leasing it new would cost me ten grand, but uh, since uh, I got the used equipment mod installed, I can lease it as a used one. It'll cost me half as much. And it shouldn't be too difficult to plant oats down. Same thing when the fall comes. I'm probably going to have to definitely lease a harvester. I only got one field. So buying a harvester right now 
not the smartest thing. I do have the harvester I want to use in my mind. I'm not going to say it yet because my mind may change, but I'm just going to keep it to myself. It's going to be a harvester I really haven't used. That's all I'm going to say. So a lot of you who follow the channel right now, yeah, we can eliminate the New Holland CR1090. I use that one quite a bit. But it is a modded one, so let's just, uh, <laughs> you know, me and my mods. It's one of those things, when you play single player, the mods definitely help out when you got big fields, because if you're playing multiplayer, I don't really see the need for some of these mods that with the capacities can hold a lot. But you got people that can help you do stuff and it won't take as long. It's like this uh, subsoiler. This subsoiler is modded for the work speed. Because if this was a real work speed, I'd be doing half the speed, and it would just take me forever. And making videos like that eh, may not be too enjoyable to watch. So that's what I'm saying about doing some of these cultivating jobs off camera. Because you're going to see me... I mean, you caught me halfway through the first job I did this morning. And now you're going to see me do this one. And between these two, I'm going to bring in $3,000. So that's, yeah. Every little penny does help at the beginning. So I do have ways I, the farm will make money other than cows and selling grain for making straw. Uh, there's a couple factories I would like to put on down, but I'm going to need to check to see if they still work. Because the reason being is I downloaded those factories a long time ago, and I have yet to use either one. So I don't know if they still work with global, the new global company version or not. I don't know if there's been updates to them. So the two... Uh, factories I like to put down and I was gonna I tried to use this on the Pacific Northwest and I decided not to because there's no profit really there but I thought if we're gonna have a dairy farm we gotta have a cheese factory so yeah gonna have ourselves a cheese factory but like I said I gotta test these mods and see if they still work or not they're just I, I have the mods I just haven't even tried them for months on end and if you were along with the Pacific Northwest series you saw with my factories when there was an update to the global company, I'm going back months now when that happened, that some of those mods uh, were not updated and the graphics are not there. I think they still work, um, but when you don't see the factory sitting there, it's kind of hard to, uh, to enjoy it. Um, the other one is actually like a fish farm. Now, I did the fish farm in FS17. Did I do that in 17? I don't remember now. I did it at some point. I don't know if that was, if I did that in videos or not, but the fish farm, if I remember correctly, you gotta feed them corn and, well, you produce fish, pretty much. That's how you feed the fish. Uh, but now you need, I think, planks or crates to put the fish on. So I may have to put down the plank factory. I forgot what that one's called. So I may have three factories up and going. And of course, if you have a plank factory, well, I'm going to have to do some lumber. So we may actually have a little a little field where we plant some trees. I do like the fact that someone did mention, and uh, he's been a long time member of this channel, that maybe I should plant some trees. So I'm going to be here for a while, and it takes about, I think about five years, we said, for trees to grow full. And I never planted trees before and gone back to cut them down. I planted trees but planted trees, I just never got back or played long enough to go back and cut them on down. Now another way I could make some money is we actually, on our land, we actually have trees on there that we could possibly cut and bring and sell. The problem is it's not the, the pine or spruce trees, it's like the ma maples and oak trees, which as we all know, those can be a pain in the butt to cut up. You just can't... The tree harvester will not work on that. You have to use a chainsaw. Ugh. I mean, it's quick money. There's a lot of trees in there. And right now, that would be my last resort for making some cash. My last resort, he says. So, all I can say right now, the plan for the first year is I'm going to be doing a lot of contracts. So, get, get ready for that. I don't think I'm going to be able to afford any fields. Uh, leasing equipment, I think all the equipment I have is what I have right now. But hopefully sometime in the fall, we'll start being able to buy some cows. Uh, get that production up and going. 
because they're not going to make milk right away. If you're new to seasons, yeah, cows will not make milk until they have offspring. So it's going to take a little, you know, it's going to be like a year, maybe uh, halfway through next season before we even start, or the cows start producing some milk to sell. That's where we're going to make our cash. I'm going to have to be smart this time because I fell for it in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, there is a capacity for how much milk a cow barn can hold. But I have never found it in the description what the limit is on a barn. On the Pacific Northwest we're into it, I think it was like 800,000 liters I had in there. And I just kept waiting. I was able to hang on to it until the milk price is good. And I was like, oh, we're at 800,000 liters. And two days later, I'm like, hey, we're at 800,000 liters. And I was like, wait a minute. Weren't we already there? Oh, yeah, we were. We are at capacity, so. So the cows will, well, the milk will be our main money income. But there's going to be a lot of equipment through the years that we're going to have to buy. Obviously. I mean, at some point, we're going to have, a, I don't want to say a whole bunch of fields, but we're going to need, we need fields to create um, cereal crops so we can make straw. Cows are going to need straw. And, of course, we're going to definitely uh, probably have a couple fields of corn so we can make chaff. And our grass field, we kind of already have, or grass meadow, I should call it, because it's not te technically a field. That's where we're going to get our hay from. Hay slash grass. That's how we're going to feed the cattle. Got to make that TMR. And I won't be selling like the manure and slurry because I'll probably use that to fertilize fields. But that's that's so far, I don't want to say so far down the line, but it's a long ways off. I'm not really sure yet. And really, you don't get that much cash for the slurry and manure anyways. But it would be income. But since we're playing with seasons, if I remember correctly, we're only going to get manure or slurry. If I give the cows straw, we're just going to get uh, solid manure. If I don't give them straw, we'll just get slurry. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's the way it, it works. If you give them straw, you only get manure, you don't get slurry. And if they have no straw, you get slurry and no manure. So technically, I could do away with the straw and just get the slurry and save myself the whole hassle. But uh, I think having some fields where I can sell some crop will be good. All right, so another field done, another $1,400. Uh, slowly but surely here. Uh, 15 and 20. I don't. It's going to take them all to get used to where these fields are. 15 should be right here, right? Because here's 14. Is that 15 right next to me? Of course it is. We'll just go right across the, right across here. I mean, $1,100, but it'll be cost me $600 if I lease the equipment. That does hurt, man. It does hurt. Now, I'm kind of hoping... Because I, I don't know, remember how much contracts I actually go for. Because I stopped doing contracts. It's been a while since I've done contracts, honestly. But it seems like the prices of contracts for cultivating seem kind of low. I know I'm on hard economy. So I'm hoping when it comes time to fertilize that the price isn't as low as well. And that could be done through the map editor, uh, map author. They can uh, create the pricing of contracts, I do believe. So as for equipment, what to buy next? What would I be buying next? I don't know as of yet. But definitely we have to lease a uh, the seed drills to get our, 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 our oats in. We have to lease a harvester. Um, probably going to have to lease a mower. I mean, I guess, do I want to buy a mower and mow our own grass field for the first year or two? I'll probably buy the... Do I need a loading wagon? That's the thing. Hmm. I mean, that's where I can make some money here, is I could, uh... We could mow the grass. Compact it, make silage. Now, the only thing is... In theory, you gotta own the BGA to sell there. And I did check it. Uh, I did buy... I showed you last episode where the BGA is. It's not marked BGA on the map. It's like CK Miles or something like that. So I I, I bought it. Uh, I saved the game. I bought it just to see how much silage goes for. And I think it's like 150. 
saw those bills for 150 at the BGA. So, I mean, I couldn't make a good amount of money there. And like I said, somebody already told me they harvested that grass meadow where I got the cow barn and they got like 400,000 liters. So I'm guessing after I put my placeables down, I may get like 300,000 liters. I mean, that'd be a good amount of money uh, for income. The problem is, I mean, yeah, I got a silo bunker to put it in, but then I got to find a way to transport it there. So I have to lease a whole bunch of stuff to load it into a trailer and then bring it on down to the BGA or CK miles as they're known. But we'll see. I guess, I guess we're not going to really know until springtime comes. Well, not you know, spring. We are in springtime, Peanut. Way to say words. Uh, yeah, the end of spring. And in case you missed it, we are playing with six-day seasons. Three days, obviously, is too short. I mean, I could ne I tried season once. I'm like, oh, uh, three days is plenty. And the first time I got to fall, it rained for like two days and the crops were always wet. And I had no time to harvest my stuff. And I'm like, all right, three days is uh, too short for me. Nine days was too long, so I said six days seems just about right. And like I said, we're not going to play every, you know, I'm not going to do an episode for every day of the season. Like when winter comes, I may just breeze right through that. And, uh, you know, we may have a last episode of fall and like, hey, I'll skip it to spring. So the ideas are starting to roll in for the series. Coming in how I want to come along. I mean, right now I'm cultivating these three fields right here, and I want to be not even five thousand dollars profit today. So I'll probably do that big field for fifteen thousand. That'll definitely help offset that loan payment from last night. Like I said, until contracts come in where they start paying a lot more, and I'm talking about the fertilizing ones, and hopefully they do pay well in this map. That's going to be our bread and butter for the first year, for, for certain. I mean, obviously, for the big grass meadow, for mower, I would like to definitely have the big M, because it's a big field. Doing a butterfly mower, I mean, it wouldn't take that long, but then I would have to, you know, it, it would be a lot of work, that's all I'm saying, for the butterfly mower, that's all. Especially when you want just to be grass because you got to bring it to the bunker to be processed to uh, go from grass to silage. Yeah, you don't want your grass turning into hay. And depending on your day, it could dry rather quickly. So when I do contracts off camera, what I will do is I'll do the jobs. I won't collect the contracts until I start recording and I'll show you I'll show you the works what works I've done in some fields. It's not gonna be we're just not gonna log in and see like, oh he's up to hundred you know, hundred and ten thousand. And I say, yeah I did contracts. Without actually show what well, showing you proof that the contracts were completed. But I can see some by being able to do some jobs in these fields, I'm seeing some potential along the way here. I mean, like these two fields I did right here, there's good opportunity to buy these fields, the cheaper fields. I can merge them into a bigger one. I mean, you got a lot of fields right here. If I merge all these fields together, that's one huge field. Although I don't think I want to do that, because like I said, you know, we're just going to have fields to make straw. And of course, a few fields to have corn to make into chaff. And harvest some corn as well if I decide to do the fish factory, if that works. So for us buying any kind of tractors or equipment for a while, yeah, I don't see that happening for a few episodes. We're just going to have to wait to see what, the, like I keep saying, those, what those fertilizer contracts bring in for us. I mean, fertilizing, like this field right here, I may get paid on a field this size, I may get paid like five grand to fertilize this kind of a field. And it's not going to take that long. So I can zip through all those quite a bit.
Now, the only thing, since we got precision farming on, when I do fertilizing contracts for other farmers, I'm not going to have it on automatic... Um, what's it called? Automatic... It's not automatic fill, but automatically... So basically, if their field needed a lot of fertilizer because the pH value was bad, or sorry, uh, nitrogen's bad in the field. Nitrogen is fertilizer. Um, so if the nitrogen levels are bad, if I had an automatic uh, displacement, automatic, uh, well, you know what I'm trying to say. I could go through a lot of fertilizer, so I'm not going to have that option on when I fertilize someone else's field. They just, you know, I'd be like, hey, I fertilize it. Unlike when I did my field, it was on automatic. It, it was dispersing the fertilizer automatically to what the level needed to be. But I didn't go through that much fertilizer. The thing is, if their field has not been uh, soil sampled, it may not take that much fertilizer anyways because they don't know how much they need. All right, so three fields are done this morning. So I'm kind of hoping next episode we'll be leasing the seed drill. Like I said, that's going to cost me five grand. We'll plant the oats in our ground. And yeah, if we go to, well, let me collect this contract first of all. Uh, if we go to here and our field is over here, field number one. And it says, see precision farming. So I got to go to precision farming. Uh, nitrogen levels are are good. Wait, did I not? Wait, I don't think I put nitrogen in there yet. I haven't fertilized the field yet. No problem. <laughs> Nitrogen's kind of kind of bad. Uh, pH value is good though. It's all green. It's not in the red. It's not in the blue. It's really good. But yeah, I have not done the nitrogen. I was looking. I'm like, wait a minute. That's not that's not good levels. It's not good levels at all. I haven't done that yet. We still got lime in the spreader. All right, that's no problem. So when it comes time to fertilizing fields, I'll be all set. I need to take another contract here. Uh, field number 20, is that like right next to where I'm at? Field number 20. That's way down here. I'll tell you what, I will take the contract and what we'll do is I'll at least, uh, I'll let you uh, ride on me down to the city. I guess we'll call it the city. I kind of like how the city and all the markets like right in the middle and all the fields are around it. It's pretty, pretty neat. Um, but then again, this is based on the real city of Griffin, Indiana. City, town. I guess I'll call it a town. So it's not like he made it this way. This is the way it actually is. So let me go ahead and take that contract in field number 20 for 1800. Ooh, 1800. I almost hit borrow items. That would really suck. So at least, uh... Let you guys ride me down through the town, and I'll start cultivating that field. And we'll end the episode. And like I said, I'm probably going to do that big contract as well. Wait, do I, do I have multiple contracts on right now? Where's field number nine? Except contract. There we go. I, I can do multiple contracts. And like I said, they're all, they're all cultivating jobs right now, as you can see, except for a couple of transportation jobs. I don't think I've ever been a fan of trans I wasn't I was I did enjoy transportation jobs when FS 15 came out and I don't remember what they were called then but used to have to go to on the map and I, I kind of like the way it was done on the map to be like little billboards that you had to go to to access the contracts or I think back then they were called missions so you would actually have to drive to wherever the billboard was in that on that map and then you would click on it and then be like, oh, these are the jobs that are available to you. And transportation was one of them in, in the beginning stages. And this was before I really started using mods and found out about cheating in money or, or doing anything like that. I was like, I got to do these jobs. I got to do these jobs. And it was kind of fun. Well, I shouldn't say kind of fun. It was fun. I did enjoy it. But now transportation jobs, I look, I'm like, I, no thanks. No, thank you. probably should stop and show you some of the aspects of this map, but I haven't been around enough to know where everything is. But they do have like some of their uh, sound animation, sound, sound animations? Uh, sounds on the map that are kind of custom in a way. 
I think I'm going to have to turn down this road here. Is that where I got to go? Is that where we're at? Okay, we're already down through the town. That's a big field. Now, as I showed you, I think around episode, I think it was episode one, I did show you some of the pricing of the fields. The pricing of the fields are not that bad. I know when you look at them on the map and you see like 700000 a million dollars, but if you look at these fields, that's about right. That's what we was kind of paying, like even on the Pacific Northwest for. I mean, that field right there is like field 35, or the, well, maybe not. That's uh, probably like field 33 on the Pacific Northwest. Uh, what am I hearing? Is that... Is that my, it's not my tractor. It sounds like a train. Uh, this should be field number 20 right down here. Yep. So all these fields I'm cultivating right now, I'm going to just earn about $7,000. But I need to bring in the cash. So I know it's been an episode of me and just cultivating, but I'm doing what needs to be done. Especially after paying $20,000 on interest last night. I was like, ooh, wow, okay. Um, no problem. Uh, we'll get we'll get to work on that. And I'll be getting to work on a couple of these fields. So like I said, I won't, if I remember, I'll try not to complete the contracts and finish them. So that way you guys can see what contracts I have done. I will be doing that big field right after this. That's definitely going to help it, help me on out. But wait at least another day, maybe two days, before we plant our field with oats. Ground temperature is just borderline. I don't want to... I don't want to uh, plant it too early. But now I just got to remember I need to put fertilizer in it. Yeah, I've tried also on the information, uh, field information. I tried to get that to work, and it's not... Uh, it's not working out for me right now. You know what it might be? I have an idea what it could be, but I'm not sure if it is. I'll have to test it on out. Does it work? If I get out here... Okay, it works fine when I'm not in a field that's had precision uh, soil sampling done on it. Well, if I go to my field... Yeah, it's all it's all around, so I, got, I have an idea what it could be, but I'm not going to say what it is yet. Unless I know if it actually fixes the problem. So I don't want to be saying this mod is a conflict with that mod, it seems like. I'll have to figure it all out. Because it's going to be kind of important for me just to get out and look at the information when I get on out. To make sure that our fields are in 100% condition. So I'm going to be here for like another five minutes. I'm going to head on over to field number nine, I think it is. And that's going to take me a while to cultivate. Cultivate, cultivate, cultivate. I don't know how many contracts I'm going to do in between episodes. I guess it all depends on how much uh, I feel like doing and how much time I have to do them. But definitely need to bring, be bringing the cash the first year. The, the more cash we bring in sooner, the faster we can make the farm grow. And the faster we can meet the challenge of trying to run a dairy farm of 2,000 cattle. I think it really hit home for me the other day when I was just thinking about it. It's like, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, you only had about uh, 500 cattle. And they were requiring, in a 10-day span, like uh, one and a quarter million liters of, of TMR. And it was like, oh, wow. So if that holds true in seasons and you got 2,000 cattle, you're talking pretty close to 5 million liters of TMR to feed cows for 10 days. Uh-huh. That's a lot of TMR. And that's going to be a lot of work. But that, that's the whole point of these challenges I try to take on. I don't know if I can if I can accomplish this or not. Or keep up with it. But that's the whole fun part of it. But that is going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. And I'll catch you again right here in Griffin, Indiana. But until then, have a good one.